Welcome back, I'm MTG Joe, and we're going to be continuing a bunch of kind of quick deck techs for Throne of Eldraine cards. Um, so these are new brews for the new set coming out next week. Uh, so I thought I'd walk you through, these are some of the fun ones I'm trying to put together. I'll be, if I could get all the cards, be playing them in the first couple weeks. These are decks that I'm interested in playing, or viewers on the channel have requested some kind of hybrid brews. Uh, so we played a lot of the standard 2020 format. We've been playing a ton of rotation proof decks. So I wanted to add now the new cards in and to see what I kind of want to build from there. Um, so I'm doing this all. I'll be posting a bunch of different decks on aetherhub.com for my MTG Joe page. Uh, you could just search me up that way. All the decks will be posted there. I'm going to try to do these quick deck decks, usually under 10 minutes for each, kind of highlighting my choice of cards for each of them. I'm really open to feedback if I missed anything. These are all theory crafted decks. Nothing has been played in practice, but a lot of them are building off of decks I've already played to some extent, and now I want to try the new cards in. So this particular one is Abzan Midrange, or basically where I want to put Garrick. Um, we played this uh, yesterday on stream, and I really like the shell, and I think with Garrick it gets a lot better, especially with Murderous Rider as well. So the deck itself, I will say this is the opposite of a budget deck. It's uh, 54 rares and 10 mythics uh, from the main board and sideboard. So it's uh, Abzan good stuff. Uh, so Knight of Eben Legion. Uh, in my 2020 deck, I had three, uh, four of them. Cut it down to three. Uh, There's a couple better cards I wanted to play in lieu of it. Uh, so this is basically a one mana. It's a very good card. So early game, it's an early attacker. If it goes unchecked, we could just keep making it bigger. Late game, it could trade with bigger creatures thanks to the death touch. Uh, it's a creature that we can get back with Cavalier of Night, and we can also sack it to kill something, so it works nicely in that combination there. Assassin's Trophy, probably the most flexible removal in the format. Um, people are probably going to be moving away from three-colored plus decks, so they'll be playing more basics, so it becomes a little bit more relevant for ramp. Um, but overall, having the flexibility to deal with anything is usually a trade-off you're willing to do. Uh, Bonds of Flourishing, I'm playing three of them. So it's kind of the card draw for the deck. Um, pretty much everything in our deck other than Assassin's Trophy let me do a quick, and Kaya's Wrath are permanents and Fine Finality. So the bulk majority of our deck are permanents. Uh, so it's pretty much always a hit. Also, the three life is quite relevant to keep us alive to the mid, mid to late game where our deck has a lot more density of powerful spells. Uh, so this is something I wanted to play out. Uh, Glass Casket is actually a card that I think will be very good in the format. It's effectively like Baffling End. Um, when it enters the battlefield, you can exile a creature with uh, CMC 3 or less. Uh, this is the early game removal that we needed. It's not conditional like Cast Down. Uh, the only downside, it's not instant speed, but it's a good way to deal with creatures that way. Uh, four of Othakaya, I think this is a great removal spell, in fact it gains life, so you'll notice a lot of our spells incidentally gain us life as well, which helps us go to the late game there. Also with Othakaya, we're playing a density of Planeswalkers, so the opponent can implicitly just lose a lot of life by attacking into them, that we can then punish them when we get Garrick down or one of our big threats. Uh, Murderous Rider is probably the best card in the set, if not one of the best cards. It'll be basically the Vraska's Contempt of this new format. So for those of you who aren't familiar how Adventure works, um, think of it as like an alternate cost. You have a split card. So you can choose to cast either on the face value a creature, a three mana life linker when it dies, put it to the bottom of the library, or you can cast it for its adventure first. It's effectively hero's downfall. So you can destroy target creature, planeswalker, you lose two life. If the spell doesn't get countered, it goes on this the, it goes into like a special exile zone um, in which you can then cast it from its adventure and then get the creature. So you effectively have two spells in one, but this is the, the way that we can deal with creatures or planeswalkers, the flexibility that you're not playing Elder Spell, where in a creature-based matchup it's not that good. Uh, Vraska Golgari Queen is a great card to deal with all the early aggression. Late game it can give us card advantage by sacking lands or some of the tokens from Garrick, whatever it may be. So you can do something like Vraska sack a Garrick token, put counters on it, and go from there. Uh, so it's kind of some synergies in the deck there. Also deals with Teferi, Narset, any of the three converted mana cost planeswalkers. Uh, Tukai's Wrath. Um, we're playing a couple of early creatures in Knight of Even Legion and Murderous Rider, but oftentimes if we're casting the Wrath, it's advantageous for us, 
and it lets us recoup and keep the board clear for our Planeswalkers to gain advantage. Two of cards that I kind of found useful. I honestly found a Johnny very good in this shell. The fact that it could give our creatures a vigilance, you can be both aggressive and defensive with the deck, especially because a lot of the bodies are good blockers. Uh, gaining three life was relevant in a lot of matchups to kind of defer the game so we can get to our bigger threats. And the minus abilities basically proliferate for your team. All our creatures get counters as well as our plane walkers so it could get us closer to uh, like anthem effects. Uh, Soren is a way for us to gain life again uh, it gives our creatures lifelink during our turn. It's a way to ping, like say your opponent has an R set, they've minused it twice, or they have to fairy bounced. You can hit him with Soren, uh, gains a life, uh, and then it could also return our creatures. So uh, there's a game I think I returned Knight of Even Legion three times in a row, and just kept having it as a blocker with uh, Death Touch each turn. So I cut it down from two to one because we have more Garricks. Um, so this is kind of the flex spot where I want to try out a couple things. Uh, Questing Beast is basically let's throw all the text onto one card. Uh, so it is a 4 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Vigilance, Death Touch, Haste. Questing Beast can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. Combat damage can't be prevented. And whenever it deals damage to an opponent, it deals that much to a Planeswalker. So it's kind of dual removal. Uh, it's a really strong threat. The reason we're not playing more is it's legendary, so we want to kind of narrow it down in that sense. So we're playing 2. Um, I'm going to get to Tolzmere in a sec. We'll highlight Cavalier. So Cavalier we played two of in the deck. Felt really strong. A 4-5 Lifelinker is a good body. When it enters the battlefield, we could sack any of our dorks to kill a creature. When it dies, we can get back Murderous Rider. We can get back Knight of Even Legion. So there's a lot of cool effects we have there. Most of the time, this is going to go into our library. But say it gets countered, we can kind of recycle it that way. Uh, Tolzmere. So Tolzmere is really, really synergistic with uh, Garrick. So when it enters the battlefield, you create a legendary 3-3 wolf, and then whenever a wolf enters the battlefield under your control, you gain 3 life, and that wolf uh, fights up to one creature you don't control. So it could come in, fight. With Garrick, Garrick's plus ability, uh, you create 2 wolves. 2-2 uh, two, 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 two wolves that have, when this creature dies, put a 1-1 one, one counter. Sorry, put a loyalty counter on Garrick, so it's the way it pluses. So every turn, Garrick basically reads with a Tolzmere out, Create two 2-2 two, two wolves, uh, gain 6 life, and have two be able to deal 4 damage to any creature, and then potentially put 2 loyalty counters on it as well. So it's a really cool effect there. Uh, it's minus 3, destroy a creature, and it's minus 6 as a permanent overrun, where all your creatures get plus 3-3 three, three and trample. Uh, so we're playing 3 of those, and then one fine finality as kind of a wrap-up to the deck. It can recycle our spells when we need, questing beast, tolls me, or whatever we need. And then a lot of times the finality part, because all our creatures have pretty high toughness, so Tolzmere will survive, Questing Beast will survive, Cavalier will survive, Murderous Rider survives. Depending on our Knight of Even Legion, it could potentially survive as well. So it's a way we can wipe their board, pretty much all their board, while still keeping the creatures. Sideboard, well, actually, let's go to the lands. Uh, if it's a dual land in Abzan colors, we're playing it. The nice thing with Abzan is we have eight temples, which is really good for utility. And then two cards I want to try out. Uh, we're playing a lot of duels, so they should come into play untapped most of the time. Is the castles. I think these are really good utility spells that cost very little downside to play. Usually these effects make the lands come into play tapped. Uh, so Castle Ardenvale is going to be a plains. And for four mana, you could create a 1-1 one, one white human. This is a way that if we kind of flood out or we're not drawing anything, we can keep creating to humans as either aggressive cards or defensive. Good against control, good as chump blockers. And then Castle Lockwit, Lockthwain, I don't know how to say that. Um, same idea, This we draw a card, so if we need kind of a late game kind of card draw, if we're out of cards, we're hellbent, we draw a card, then lose life equal to the number of cards in our hand. If we have no cards in our hand or just the one, we just lose a life to draw a card. So those are pretty good utility lands to throw on the deck. Sideboard, it's still a little early to know for sure what we want to include in a sideboard, but this is kind of my initial thought of what we'd want. Uh, Sorcerer Spyglass versus any of the uh, mid-range mirrors, there's lots of Planeswalkers, you name a Nisa or something like that will be really useful. Legion's End against early aggressive decks, the ramp decks, so anything with Voracious Hydra, Hydroid Crisis would be good to get rid of them. Noxious Grasp, there's going to be a lot of green, like you see with this, like these cards, like Garrick's really good, Questing Beast is really good, 
Nisa's very good. Hydroid Crisis. We got to get rid of those. So that's where Noxious Grass comes in. Uh, Hushbringer. Uh, so Golos decks, Elemental decks, um, anything Ali Eldrazi plays or Seth. Uh, the Anti Pan Harmonicon. Uh, so this is a really good creature. We could bring it in. Um, so this is something I wanted to try out. Uh, Knight of Autumn is basically our way to destroy artifacts or enchantments. Again, it's aggressive decks. It's for life that we can gain. And sometimes when we just want to go more on the offensive. So again, it's like a hard control with counter spells. We want to get under them. So a 3 mana 4-3 is a good beater in that case. Uh, two Nisas, again, versus, I usually bring these in control mirrors or um, like mid-range mirrors. Uh, just it's a good way to keep generating uh, tokens to attack with. And one command the dread horde either versus the slower decks or the mid-range mirrors we like i showed with the deck we're gaining a lot of incidental life so it's a good way to just steal everything from their uh graveyard so it's pretty much the deck um like i said you can find all the deck lists i'm gonna be posting there i'm just trying to keep these quick kind of overviews let me know what you think if i missed anything there's a lot of cards spoiled i tried going through them all today um, this will probably change a bunch before now in spoilers, but these are usually the starting points that I'm going to work with and then build from there as we actually get the cards and play with. See what works, what doesn't. This is the fun part where it's all theory. We don't know what's coming out yet, so, or sorry, we don't know what's really, really going to be good. Um, I can probably say with confidence Murderous Rider is going to be good, um, but we'll kind of play around and go from there. Uh, but yeah, let me know, and if there's any other kind of deck ideas you'd like to see, um shoot a comment below and i will try to brew something in advance of the next set uh thanks for tuning in and have a great one